It's Sunday, in other words, the Lord's Day, and I am prepared to tell the truth and shame the devil. What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. So prepare for Trump 2020, everybody. I've been very honest about the fact that my vote is up for grabs this time around. I've also been honest about the fact that I voted for Trump at the la- in the last election. I could go into why I voted for Donald Trump in the last election, but instead I think I'd save that for another video so that it doesn't take up my time and my entire Sunday on this one. Plus, I don't want to be arguing with people forever. What I'm going to tell you guys is liberal people really need to change up their strategy if they're serious about trying to win this time around. With the field of potential candidates on the left right now, I don't really see it as possible because none of them are really trying to appeal to the people that they need to be appealing to and none of them are going for like a really level-headed approach biden would be the closest but biden is pretty much out because he's old and some people say he's creepy which i don't necessarily know that i agree with each of those things but it's what the narrative is it's what everybody's going with and it's the reason like polls have even shown that he's the most electable and again Rather than going with the most electable, people are trying to go for the most popular. I noticed that online, a lot of black voters seem to be talking about Donald Trump and seem to be in favor of Donald Trump. And that, in large part, from what I'm seeing, is because they feel like the LGBT community has started to bully them and started to try to take over their spaces and won't take no for an answer when it comes to certain things. And... I'm going to be honest when I say I talk to a lot of the people that comment on my videos like that and try to let them know that the average LGBT person is not doing that. Uh, A lot of where that's coming from is the problem that the loudest and the dumbest, to be honest, are the ones that are speaking for us. And that's the people that are making it seem like we're all offended by everything and we're all thinking that we should be allowed in every space that black people have designated for their celebrations, their awards. I mean, like, and I get it. I'm gonna gonna be 100% honest. When black people tell me that they feel like they just want their own things, yes, the black community has been marginalized for long enough that I feel like they should be able to say, hey, this is for us. This is our own celebration. This is our own award show. This is not to be taken over by the LGBTQ community. When they say that we don't honor them, though, that's not necessarily true because a lot of times, in a lot of cases, we do, in the gay community, a lot of us do put black performers on a pedestal. Beyonce is huge in the gay community, but also Beyonce is huge everywhere. But you take smaller artists like Deborah Cox. No, Deborah Cox probably wouldn't have much of a career if it wasn't for the LGBTQ community. Um, she's been working prides and we've been buying the remixes of her music. You know, usually her music is a little more ballady, but once they pop it with the remix, the fags love it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm not trying to start that argument, but I'm just saying like when I hear that from black people, I'm like, mm, you need to spend a little more time in the gay community if you're going to tell me who it is we honor and who we don't honor, because I think you'd be surprised to find out. Uh, the way that a lot of LGBT people feel about other people of color or um, black people specifically in entertainment. And even just on the streets, you know, it's one of the big problems for the LGBTQ community. And I don't mind being constructively critical, if that's a way you would term that, of my own community. And only because... I think that's the most helpful. Like I do that with myself in life and in comedy. I always look at myself and I'm like, okay, where am I falling short? Where could I be a little bit better? And sometimes in the comments, I get a little frustrated with people. But even there, if you pay attention to my comment section, uh, especially the one on Angelica Ross and the Black Girls Rock situation, I'll post it up there for you guys. It'll be right there. Um, But if you check out my comments on that. In a lot of cases, I just try to help people get a better understanding of, you know, where a lot of us as gay individuals are coming from. But when it comes to the gay community specifically and who speaks for us, in a lot of cases, that is white men that are talking for us. It is. And when it comes to like 
the trans community that's angry about everything, in a lot of cases, that is white trans people that are trying to make it seem like, and I'm not trying to cause a division within the LGBT community, but I am saying to other LGBT people, if you're hearing this from black people, that they're starting to feel bullied by the LGBTQ community, and then you're hearing it from people, not only just me, but people like me that are also gay, uh, LGBT, if we're being more broad about it, are saying that we don't feel included, we don't feel like our voices are being heard, then at some point you need to look at that and say, okay, why is it so many people of color are feeling disconnected and even in some cases bullied by the LGBTQ community? Why is that? What can we do to possibly correct that? But I know that's not gonna happen. People are gonna call me stupid, people are gonna call me hateful, people are gonna call me transphobic. And in that Angelica Ross video uh, that I did, I tried to be fair on both sides and I got people attacking me in the comments from both sides. And this isn't a sob story because really, it just gives me more to think about and more ways to look at it. And I didn't feel like anybody was overly disrespectful. On both sides, I felt like people weren't listening. There were some people that just reacted to the video without even really watching the video, which that was very frustrating because I try to treat everybody with respect, so I'll try to answer every comment. Do some comments slip by? Yes. If you comment on another person's comments, a lot of times I don't even get a not notification for, for that. So the original commenter will mention me, actually mentioned me on on their comment and then I'll look back at the comment and I'll be like oh there's actually other people that have commented on this and a lot of cases those people will be like I see you don't want to answer me and it's like I didn't even see your comment because YouTube doesn't work like that YouTube isn't like Facebook where it gives you a notification for every single comment you get it's kind of random the way that YouTube does it so that's not my fault I'm willing to answer people's questions but you've got just got to put your own comment and then I'll see it more than likely. And even then, sometimes we don't see it. It's very frustrating, that part of YouTube. But I'll figure out more and more how to work it and how to figure it out. Because I do feel like if I'm going to tell people that you need to listen to other people, you need to actually pay attention to what it is that people are saying, then I myself need to practice what I preach and actually be paying attention. So I do try to answer most of the questions, but like I said, there were some people that, like if I give you the respect that I'm willing to answer your question, the least you can do is watch the video and see what my point of view is. Because there were people that were accusing me of saying that trans people deserve to be in the Black Girls Rock award show and are honored or mentioned. And I didn't say that, I actually said the opposite. I said I could see how they wouldn't be included. Then I had trans people getting mad at me and telling me that I was uh, sympathizing with transphobes and that I support transphobia. And it was like, no, just because I didn't say that I feel like you deserve to be in their award show doesn't mean that I'm supporting transphobia. I'm just saying I can see how a marginalized group that has had very little opportunity to get shine on their own would want to at this point have their own space at least for a while, you know, give a couple years. But then people get mad at me and tell me I'm trying to hold up progress. And so that's why I say prepare for Donald Trump to continue to be your president because not enough people on the left are listening right now. And that was a huge part of the problem the first time was that not enough people on the left were listening. And some of the ideas on the left I'm not being biased here, but they're just a little too pie in the sky for the average person. The average person is looking at it like, you know, this all sounds crazy to me. And we've had a lot of progress, you know? I mean, like, just in general, we've had a lot of progress and we'll continue to progress. It doesn't matter who the president is. I know that because as a society on the streets, things are getting better. Politically, things are terrible and they're going to continue to get worse because nobody wants to listen to anybody. Um, both sides don't want to listen, you know, like that disappointed me in, in my comments section because I kept repeatedly telling people, um, like some of the commenters, the black women that were commenting were like, I'm not going to be cisgender. I don't know why you're trying to force me to be cisgender. And what I said was I use the term cisgender when I'm talking about trans issues 
because it makes the distinction and it's a shorthand for me just to be able to say this. It's not at all meant to be offensive and I'm not trying to tell any woman how they're supposed to identify. If a woman, if a trans woman just says she's a woman, which I've seen that happen before, I'm not going to argue with her about that. If a straight woman or a, you know, biological female, cisgender woman says that she's a natural born woman, identifies that way. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not here to argue with people about the way they identify. I identify the way I identify and I expect the people around me to respect that too. So it's not like something I'm arguing. It's not like something I'm pushing for, but there were still a lot of people that were arguing that with me. And it's like, it's not fair to argue with me, an individual, like you're arguing or you're debating the entire LGBTQ community. Because if you can't tell by this video, I'm not at all a person who just blindly follows the LGBTQ agenda, or I don't even think there's like, I, that, I don't like that I use that term, but I'm going to leave it in the video because that's a, what a lot of people refer to it as. And I can see why on that too. Like that's again, part of taking responsibility. Sometimes you do have to accept that it does come off looking like an agenda, but it's not in the LGBTQ community. It's a lot of individuals that have varying points of view on different issues and we're not a monolith. And that's a lot of times the way it looks. And so it looks like we as a group are bullying people or trying to make people say particular words. And it's like, no, a lot of us really aren't doing that. A lot of us are just like you, like just trying to live our lives, just trying to pay our bills, just trying to be happy, just trying to figure out what's going on with ourselves mentally, emotionally, um, financially, all of that stuff. Like in that way, we're so much alike, all of like as human beings, white, black, Latino, you know, LGBT, and people try to divide us. And it's really not necessary for us to divide ourselves that way, but we do it, we fall into it. And so it's, it's something that I really try to avoid myself. And um, like last time when I voted for Donald Trump, um, there were people that were mad at me that thought I was trying to ruin their lives. And it's like, well, I'm not thinking about you like that. Just like you're not thinking about me when you make every decision you make, when you vote, when you pay your bills, when you talk to your family, you're not always thinking about me. A lot of you don't even know me. So why would I be trying to ruin your life by voting the way I vote when really the reason that I voted the way that I voted was because I saw how certain aspects could help my people and could push the things that are important to some of the people I know to the front of the line. And also, like I said, because the left wasn't listening to me at all when I would try to tell, even now, it's like the reason, one of the other reasons I, I say prepare for Trump 2020 is I just posted something about this on my Facebook and somebody posted, are you sure these aren't bots? And it's like, this is the same kind of stuff that lost it for you the last time and you're going to go the same route again. Like you don't believe these people exist. It's actual people saying actual things that are not from bots. If you've ever been contacted by a bot, if you know what bots work like, which we all on the internet in some way have had some kind of interaction with bots, you know that bots don't talk like regular people. They're not made to mimic actual people. A lot of people wish that it had gotten to that point, but it just, the technology isn't there. Bots aren't talking like, like we talk on the streets, which is the way that these comments are, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's like people refuse to accept that their strategy is off. And that really is the main reason that I tell you, prepare for Trump 2020. And you know what? I'm going to tell you guys this. I Like I said, my vote is still 100% up for grabs. But if you keep going like you're going and you keep, uh, you try calling me stupid again and making it seem like I'm the worst person in the world because I'm actually open to listening to people that have opinions other than mine, you're going to leave me no choice but to go Trump 2020 myself. And like I said, I wanted to see what else was out there. I want to see what else is out there. But right now, you're giving me nothing and you're not listening to me at all. At all. So it's Sunday and that's my truth for the moment. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm open to reading and discussing any of your guys' opinions. 
just please, even if you don't agree with me, keep it respectful. I, get, I don't even mind if you get passionate in your disagreement. I don't mind that. Keep it respectful. And also remember, you have a life. You have other things to do. So you don't have to keep going, keep going. I won't, I'm not a last word kind of guy. I don't care if you get the last word. Sometimes I'm cool to just keep it pushing. But, you know, some people just, they comment on everybody's comment and just have to keep going at me. And I'm like, what? do you not have other things to do? Anyway, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Mm-hmm.